We're more than Star Trek and science fiction these days. Up next, we dive into the latest science and space headlines on Talkin' Science. I honestly thought I had longer than that, but anyway. Let's get into Talkin' Science, uh, which started in 2019 and is all about bringing you the latest in science and space. This is a good one for the guys. Let's see how they go. Southern launches new corporate look, possible fingerprints of gravitational waves, a planet that shouldn't exist. And just what the heck is that on the moon? This is Trek Zone's Talkin' Science. This is the Bite Size Podcast, catching you up on the latest science and space headlines. Straight out of 2001, researchers studying the far side of the moon have discovered a block of granite that apparently used to be main side of a volcano, but they're unsure how the volcano could have formed for more than 20 years. An area on the far side of the moon called Compton Belkovich has piqued many an astronomer. It has some odd topography and the upper metre of soil seems to have more radioactive thorium than its surroundings. Now researchers at the Planetary Science Institute in Arizona have used data from China's Chang'e 1 and 2 orbiters to determine that it is 50, a 50 kilometre wide area and it's unexpectedly hot. The path of logical conclusions led Matt Siegler and his team to decaying isotopes created by the repeated melting of rock via volcanism. Quasars are the supermassive black holes at the centres of early galaxies and now scientists have unlocked some of their secrets to use them as clocks to measure the near to measure near the beginning of time of the universe. With this tick-tock of the quasar clock, we can now chart time across the life of the cosmos. Einstein's general theory of relativity means that we should observe the distant and hence ancient universe running much slower than the present day. However, peering back that far in time has proven elusive. Scientists have now cracked that mystery by the use of quasars. Previously, astronomers had confirmed this slow motion universe back to about half the age of the universe using supernovae as standard clocks. But while supernovae are exceedingly bright, they are difficult to observe at the immense distances needed to peer into the early universe. Professor Lewis from the School of Physics and Sydney Institute for Astronomy at the University of Sydney worked with astrostatistician Dr Brewer to examine details of 190 quasars observed over two decades combining the observations taken at different wavelengths, green light, red light, and into the infrared. They were able to standardise the ticking of each quasar through the application of Bayesian analysis. They found the expansion of the universe imprinted on each quasar's ticking. Scientists have encountered a planet that appears to have survived its host star expanding outwards to become a red giant. However, the single star, Bake 2, might once have been a binary system helping the lucky planet to survive. The Jupiter-like gas planet 8UMIB named Halia closely orbits the giant star Bake 2. In a first for astronomy, a team, including Dr Dan Hoiber and Professor Tim Bedding from the University of Sydney, has discovered that Halla survived a period of violent stellar transition that would normally have destroyed close-in planets. Using observations of Baikdu's stellar oscillations from NASA's Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite, the scientific team found that the star is burning helium rather than hydrogen in its core, signalling that it had once expanded enormously into a red giant star. The planet, Halia, uh, the planet Halla was discovered in 2015 by a team of Korean astronomers using the radial velocity method, which measures the periodic gravitational tug of the orbiting planet on its star, and it's about 520 light years from Earth. Protecting the Earth from alien materials and protecting other planets from contamination with our own is an inter international concern and responsibility, say international scientists. Planetary protection is a set of measures agreed upon at an international level to safeguard scientific investigations during space exploration. 
the team says. As space becomes more accessible with complex and innovative projects that involve robotics, including those missions where samples are brought back from space to Earth, and human exploration, we must protect pristine environments that we explore and our own biosphere. The researchers reviewed the role of the Committee on Space Research, or COSPAR, panel and its planetary protection policy, including recent considerations regarding that policy for the Moon, Venus, Mars and small planetary bodies. In short, any project that requires particular attention regarding planetary protection need look no further than the COSPAR panel on planetary protection, a one-stop shop for information and guidance on preventing preventing forward and backward contamination. In a study published in the Astronomy and Astrophysics Journal, scientists have used a powerful telescope in the Netherlands to observe a 68 of SpaceX's Starlink satellites and detected emissions from those satellites that are drifting out of their allocated band. Frederico Di Vroino, co-director of the International Astronomical Union Centre for the Protection of the Dark and Quiet Sky, and one of the authors of the study, says the finding is significant given the growing number of satellites orbiting our planet. Scientists say regulation is unable to keep up with the record number of satellites being launched, and those control mechanisms urgently need to catch up to ensure newer, more sensitive instruments that are coming online in the years ahead. Like the Square Kilometre Array, have clear sky to peer deeper into the past. And finally, our good friends over at Southern Launch have unveiled a new look as they continue to power ahead with the future ambitious launches from Whaler's Way and Kuniba. CEO Lloyd Damp says our new logo marks the next chapter for Southern Launch. It signifies the growth we have had as a company over the past five years and sends a message to the global space industry that what we have to offer is unique and world class. Designed in-house, the new logo depicts a rocket plume reaching a pinnacle. This also means new merch will be available in their online stores soon and hopefully a shirt might just be making its way to my post office box. Well, members get perks. Click join under every Trexone video to sign up and get early access and behind the scenes for less than a cup of coffee per month. For our podcast listeners, jump onto the trek.zone slash support. Clicking thanks under Trexone's videos enables a one-time contribution while heading to the trek.zone slash PayPal is the most direct route into this podcast budget. Nothing fancy, just my pure dedication to this podcast network for a decade. Do any of them today and have my eternal gratitude. Simply continue watching, liking, and subscribing. That works too. I'm Matt Miller for Trekzone. I'll see you in the comments.